Hello. In this video, we want to prove an important result about the probability density. Recall that if we have a wave function psi, the probability density is the square modulus, or if we have a complex wave function, it's equal to psi star psi. And the result we want to prove is the following. We want to prove that this is a non-negative real number, so it is greater than or equal to zero, and also want to prove that this is an element of the real numbers. Why are we interested in this proof? Recall that according to Max Born, the probability density gives us the probability that a particular particle will be at a particular location in space. For a probability to make any sense at all, it has to be a number that's non-negative, and it also has to be a real number. In this video, we're going to show two proofs that are related to each other of how to do this. So, for the first proof, we're going to proceed in the following manner. We're going to assume that we can write the wave function in the following form. We can assume that it might be complex, so we can write it in the form a plus bi. And what's particularly important in this case is that we're picking a and b to be real numbers. And that's an important part of the proof that a and b are both real. Recall also that if that is our wave function, that the complex conjugate psi star is going to be equal to a minus b i. And again, a and b are both real numbers. So now, what do we want to do next? We want to actually form the product psi star psi. So psi star is going to be a minus bi. Psi itself is going to be a plus bi. And we can use the process known as FOIL to determine what this product is going to be. So first we have a times a. We have a squared. The next term is a times bi, so we have plus a b i minus b i times a is going to be minus a b i and our last term is going to be minus b i times plus b i so that gives us minus b squared i squared so we can multiply formally what do we get well, we notice that we have a plus ABI and minus ABI in the center. So those will add to zero. And we're left with A squared minus B squared I squared. But recall that since I is the square root of minus one, I squared is equal to minus one. So since i squared is minus 1 times minus b squared, we can simplify this to be a squared plus b squared. So we've determined that the complex conjugate is equal to, we start with a psi being a plus bi, the complex conjugate would be a minus bi, and then the probability density would be simplified to a squared plus b squared. Now, here's where we use the fact that a and b are both real numbers. Since a is a real number, that tells us two things about a squared. It tells us first that a squared has to be greater than or equal to zero. For example, if a were a negative number and we squared it, we would get a positive number. If a were zero, a squared would be equal to zero. And if a is positive and we square the number, we have a number that's greater than zero. So in all three cases, a squared must be greater than or equal to zero. And if we take a real number a and multiply it by itself, we also get a real number because the real numbers are closed under multiplication, we say. 
So we know that a squared has to be a real number. Using exactly the same reasoning for b. So if we square b, we know that b squared also has to be greater than or equal to zero. It's a non-negative number. And similarly, if we take a real number b and multiply it times another real number b, the product b squared has to be a real number because the real numbers are closed under multiplication. So we've determined two important facts about a squared and b squared. And again, since a squared and b squared are each real numbers, we can add them together and they're non-negative real numbers. We know that a squared plus b squared also has to be greater than or equal to zero. And the sum a squared plus b squared has to be a real number. So we've determined, we've proven what we set out to prove. We've proven that the probability density is actually a non-negative real number, which is what we need if we want to use the probability density and interpret it as the probability of a particle being in a particular location in space. Now we can proceed with our second method of proving the same important fact about the probability density. So this is proof number two. And the trick in this case, we're going to write the wave function in the following form as r times e to the i theta. And r and theta are going to be real numbers. So if we choose to write the wave function in this form, we can write the complex conjugate psi star as r times e to the minus i theta. Recall that to form the complex conjugate, we simply replace i by minus i. And again, r and theta are, just as up here, are real numbers. So now what we want to do is to form the product, the probability density, psi star psi. Psi star is r e to the minus i theta. The psi is going to be r times e to the i theta. And we notice something works out very nice for us here is that e to the minus i theta times e to the i theta gives us e to the zero, which is simply one. So these two terms, when we multiply, drop out, and we're left with the product being simply r squared. Since r is a real number, if we multiply r times r, we know immediately that r squared has to be greater than or equal to zero. And since r is a real number, and r, um, the real numbers are closed under multiplication, we also know immediately that r squared is an element of the reals. So since r squared is just another way of writing psi star psi, this tells us right away that psi star psi, the probability density, is greater than or equal to zero, and it's a real number, which is exactly what we wanted to prove when we started out. So we were able to demonstrate this important fact two different ways, and the trick in each case was simply how we chose to write the form of the com possibly complex value of the wave function. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.